Today I'm going to show you guys how you can make this epic forest base for your D&D and wargaming miniatures. Howdy everyone, I'm Scott from Nightfall Minis and today I'm going to show you how I made this epic looking base for a recent collaboration I did over with Naga Minis over on Patreon. This was for a kitty mount with a mouse knight. I think it came out absolutely gorgeously and I decided while I was making this, I knew it was going to be a cool and epic little base. I thought I'd do a tutorial to show you guys how easy it is to make one of these for yourself. So let's get cracking. First thing you're going to need is a base. Now, as with most Patreons, Naga Minis does come with their own pre-built bases. In this case, I've got three different ones. I just wanted to make one a little bit more unique, a little bit more customizable, something that I wanted that told the story for what I was painting. So I printed off a 50mm disc without the bezel side, so it's just straight up. It's a bit easier for resin pouring later. You can just use anything, some plywood if you wanted to. All we're doing is making sure that the mini that we're going to use on it is going to fit nicely on it. Now, this point, I was still midway through painting it. I'd had a few issues um, during the printing process process from my own printer so i was just trying to make sure that this would fit onto it once i'd repaired it and finished the painting so this is kind of a midway segment where i could do this while i was waiting for the resin to cure at the same time so as long as the model fitted where i wanted it to go i then looked at what sort of pose i wanted it naturally this model looked like as if it was jumping forward with the front paws hitting the ground and the rear paws being out of the ground sort of thing in like a jumping motion like a pouncing motion like a cat would do and straight away the story that i had in my head was this mouse was bombing through the forest ready to attack and the kitty had jumped off the side of an embankment straight into the river ready to get into the fight and that's what i wanted to go with so to start off with the base i wanted to build the embankment and for this it would be perfect to use some court board so you can get cardboard from pretty much anywhere, but this one I actually bought from Green Stuff World. I've got a review of some other Green Stuff World products coming up soon. I ordered from them about two months ago. It took quite a long time for it to arrive. So it's not the best right now. If you want to order stuff, you're going to have to wait a little bit. But the products that they do sell is fantastic. There's no doubt about it. And the cardboard is no exception. So to start off with, it's just a case of drawing a few circles using the 50mm base as a template because that's ultimately how big it's going to be now only half this base was going to be covered with the court board it's going to be in a stepping up motion as if it was an embankment so i only need to cut out the two to be fair and it only needs to be quite rough it doesn't need to be perfect so instead of using the knife i just ended up ripping it the idea here is i wanted to look more like a rock face rather than it being smooth so the natural tears and divots and rips that you're going to get with the court board as you are ripping it by hand is going to add to that effect of it being a bit more rocky, a bit more rough, a bit more terrain like rather than it being something that's a bit more smooth like you would find from marble or anything like that. So with the two discs ripped apart and ready to go I just folded those both in half so then we could cover half of the base and still leave the other half ready for the resin. So just literally folding these over, snapping them would then create that rough texture on the edge of it. And then measuring up to make sure that this would work fine with the kitty mount once it was fitted on. It was just a case of arranging these to make them look like a natural stone formation. And then I'm just using super glue to glue these down onto the base, squishing them all together, and then making sure that the mini is going to sit exactly how I want it. Measuring all the time, making sure that this is going to work perfectly. So the next step was to seal in the cork board just to make sure that later on when I'm dry brushing it and when I'm adding bits to it, it's not going to start breaking, flicking off and to give a little bit more rigidity to the base. And with this being a 3D printed base as well, there was some layer lines on the top layer, which was going to ultimately be covered with resin. I didn't want that to show through. So using this is perfect for it. So if you've not seen Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft, you really should. He's fantastic. He's really good at train building and i use this based off the stuff that he does with his because i find it works perfectly and all this is is some black acrylic which is just from the pound shop don't use your normal regular paints because it's too expensive and you'll run through them really quickly and mod podge mat simple as that 50 50 mix i put them in an airtight pot here because it means i can seal them and then use them later on so i'm not throwing anything away i'm not wasting anything and then i'm just going to splodge it on everywhere now you might think you're going to start losing some detail here and you're really not. I've not lost any detail on any of the terrain that I've ever built and I've never seen Jeremy lose any of his that he's done over on his channel either. So it's completely safe to use. Obviously make sure you're not leaving big drip marks or anything anywhere. Work it in to all the areas. But what this is going to do is give you a really strong solid seal and also base coat at the same time 
on the bottom of this base it's going to mean that it's going to make it easier for me later on when i start layering and doing some bits and pieces on it i know it's going to be solid underneath it for the dry brushing and for any other bits i need to add to it and then later on if i wanted to do anything such as pinning if i wanted to pin a model to it or anything like that if it was a bigger diorama base i know this would hold it because of what we're doing here just to seal it all together now this mix will take a long time to dry, it'll take a few hours to dry, but once it's finished it's going to be absolutely solid and unlike a PVA mixture which is what I would have used a few years ago, you're going to find that this isn't water soluble so when you do start adding paint and stuff to it you're not going to be reactivating the PVA because Mod Podge doesn't work like that. So the next step for me here was to start putting on a base coat for what I wanted the rocks to be. Now the majority of the top of the rocks is going to be covered by leaves and twigs and logs and all the sorts of stuff you'd find on a forest floor but i wanted the sides of it to be quite rocky so all i'm using here is a dark mechanica standard gray from gw and i'm just using this with one of those large brushes that you get from gw any brush that you can use to get into all the nooks and crannies will be absolutely perfect but i'm just using this as a base color with the black as an undercoat as well it's going to darken down the gray quite nicely it's going to make a really cool rock covering when we have finished with this with the next steps that we're going to go with so while this is still wet, we're going to move on to the base of the river. So this one's going to be quite a rough paint using Citadel's Gulf or Brown to simulate the silt and all the rocks and debris and stuff that you would get at the bottom of the river. And then I'm going to mix in some Vallejo's Marine Blue to simulate the darker areas. So while this is still wet, we're not looking for a perfect wet blend. This isn't a showcase mini or anything like this. This is literally just for the base to go where the resin is going to go but this is going to help simulate those darker spots that you would find in rivers those deeper areas so when you're looking through the resin it's going to give it more of a 3d effect even though it is still a flat base the next step that we're going to do on this is dry brushing the rocks now most people will probably know how to dry brush if you don't don't worry i am going to be doing a beginner series to show you how to do everything from taking the models off a sprue cleaning them up glue them together painting them to a base level, dry brushing and even some of the more advanced techniques but all I'm doing here is loading up the brush with a lighter grey, taking off the majority of it with a bit of kitchen roll and then just brushing across the faces of the rocks. Now this is quite a heavy dry brush, we're going to dull this down with some inks and some washes later on uh, but this first mid-tone is going to be quite a heavy one just to highlight all those areas on top of the rocks. And as soon as that's dry, we're going to move on to an even lighter layer. So I'm using Celestial Grey here by Games Workshop, and I'm doing the same dry brush, just a lot lighter. So I'm making sure there's even less paint on the brush here, and I'm just making sure I'm hitting the top layers and the top angles on the rocks, not any of the underfaces. I wanted to show this off as a normal rock would be. The dark parts would be underneath it, the dirty parts. The top of the rocks would be the one that's been more worn down than the lighter colours. So I'm just trying to simulate here some natural rock effects. So to get those dark tones I've just mentioned, those shadows, those dirty grimy bits that you'd normally find on rocks, I'm going to be using two washes here. I'm going to be using Agrax Earthshade and Baletan Green. Now the green and the brown of these two washes mix perfectly when you're doing any rock faces. It gives it like a mouldy sort of exterior without having to go in and add too much detail. It's It really is magic in a pot. And I'm going to put this on quite liberally. I'm going to grab some straight from the pot with an old brush. I'm going to stipple it into all of those areas with the Agrax Earthshade and then move straight onto the Beltang Green. I'm not going to be messing about here trying to make it perfect. I'm going to be mixing these together. I'm going to be putting green on some of the areas like on top of some of the rock faces where it would get a bit more moldy, a bit more mossy. And I'm going to be putting a lot more of the dark browns on the under parts of it. And these two, once dry and mixed together, are going to give it a really nice aged rock look effect. You're going to want to wait a few hours once you've put on the washes to make sure they dry properly. So then when you're painting on top of it, you're not going to be dragging any of the washes, reactivating the washes, making a mess of your next layers of your paints. But the next step that I'm going to move on to is the grassy area on top of it. And I'm going to base this over in brown instead of what you would normally think back in the night is doing everything goblin green we're going to actually base it in brown the idea here is is that the majority of dirt that you're going to find underneath any grass is going to be brown so it's just going to make it a better effect when we start adding some of the flock in and some of the other terrain textures later on so the first texture we're going to use is actually like coconut skin i think you get it from pet shops and it's for lizards it comes in a brick but when you break it down it turns into like strands and fibers and little clumps and also into like a fine dust and this is perfect for any sort of forest floor basing that we're going to do because the fine dust is going to simulate dirt and stuff and 
the clumps and the strands of fibers themselves are going to simulate roots and little bits of fallen bark and debris and we're going to attach this using mod podge mat straight from the pot we're going to grab it out with an old brush start splodging over all the top of the base where you would naturally find it so we're going to leave the rock faces entirely and just do the flat surfaces and out of this mix we're going to be looking for just the fine grit we're going to leave the other strangly bits the, the twigs sort of thing for later we're just going to be looking for the fine bits here and we're going to tap off any excess back into that pot and the effect that we're going to get straight away is going to give us like a dirt effect which is going to be perfect for the start of where we're going to build up on our base so to add a bit of color to the base we're going to start adding some flock now this is just a light and a dark flock mixed together it's just some cheap stuff i don't own a static grass applicator i'd love to own one and if anyone wants to send me one that'd be amazing but for now i'm just going to be using the cheap stuff and we're going to apply this using mod podge matte again and i'm just going to be a bit more selective with this i'm just going to go around some of the edges of the dirt areas i'm going to add it to some of the tops of the rocks where you would find little bits of grass tufts and stuff growing and we're just going to place this on and i'm actually going to push this onto the base to make sure it sticks and it stays attached and then just knock off the excess back into the tub so we can use that for later but those little bits of grass that we've added is going to give us a really cool effect straight away making this look a bit more realistic and giving it a bit more color the definition a bit more depth so back onto the coconut fibers we're going to be adding some of those bits of debris that you find on a forest floor so some of those roots and those fallen twigs and just the general mess that you find on a forest floor it's not nice and even like it is currently and i'm going to be dobbing on the mod podge mat again in just random places and i'm going to be using this time the stringy parts of the coconut fibers and again just pushing these on uh, what you're going to find is they're going to stick in certain places and they're going to like hang off in certain places and that's exactly what you want because you don't want it all to be stuck down flat to the floor it's going to give it straight away a more realistic 3d effect and you can go as far as you want with this so you can add a few layers i think i added two or three different layers of mod podge on this and just kept adding it on and stacking it on until i was happy with the result but you're going to find this is going to give it more depth and de definition a more realistic finish than you would do just by leaving it flat with the normal coconut sort of grind mix and the flock this is just going to elevate it to the next position to make it look even nicer the next effect i wanted to add was a tree stump or a fallen log or something that was stuck in the undergrowth and for this i'm going to use some tree bark or some wood chippings it's really easy to find you can find it while you're out and about on a walk i think i found this when i was out and about with the family or you can even buy a pack of it if you wanted to i think it's for like play areas and stuff like that but all i'm going to do is use a sharp knife just to cut off a corner of it and using the flat edge to put down flat to the floor this is going to give it the effect of some wood that's been just fallen over or rotten and decayed and it's stuck in the undergrowth you can also use this sort of stuff for a slate rock effect as well so i've used this in one of my cities of sigma 3d print builds that i'm currently doing with titan forge it's for my dragon emperor guy for my dark lord on a dark dragon sort of thing but it looks fantastic as you can see it's a really cool effect to sell the slate looking rock rather than the rock that we're doing now with the cork board it depends on the scale that you're doing for it i think for bigger minis the slate looks nicer but for smaller ones like this the cork board is perfect and at this point you could leave the base exactly how it is chuck your mini on it and you should be chuffed with yourself because it's a fantastic looking base and it's not taking too long either but with this being like heroic character and something that i was doing as part of a collaboration i like to add a little bit more flair and i think resin is one of those things that people just naturally drawn to when they see a resin bit on a base or on a diorama it really sells the additional effects that you're looking for so for this i'm using some uv resin from green stuff world instead of the normal two-part epoxy i just wanted it to be cured and done with faster rather than waiting 24 hours i had other stuff i needed to get done and i'm just using some old blister packaging here and using a hot glue gun i'm going to wrap the blister packaging around it and then hot glue gun it all around the base of it to make sure that nothing leaks out and again this is why i'm using the flat base that i've printed rather than a bev bezel base you can use it as i said before with some chipboard or some plywood or anything if you wanted to as well i just found it easier having access to a 3d printer i can just print these whenever i want to and make sure i've got space underneath it to magnetize the bases for movement and stuff for later on it just makes it easier for me but we're just going to make sure here that there's no space where this uv resin could potentially leak now with this being uv resin it either needs sunlight or it needs a uv torch and i do have a little one that i use for when i'm using the uv activated super glue but I've also got a bigger one that I use for when I'm using my 3D printing stuff when I'm curing that resin. So I'm going to use that later. 
But for now, I'm going to mix up the UV resin with some intensity ink from Green Stuff World, some nice blue color. I want it to be quite a nice fantasy looking blue rather than a, a more realistic looking blue just because of the miniature that I was putting onto the base. Now, in hindsight, I should have probably used a two part epoxy mix because one liter of resin, of two part epoxy resin, is 17 quid. 30 milliliters of UV resin from Green Stuff World is 17 quid. So, cost effective wise it's probably better to wait the 24 hours i just wanted to see how this would work it's the first time i've used it in a more pouring capacity rather than just sticking stuff together sort of thing so i want to see how this would turn out but all i'm doing here is popping in about 20 mil of the uv resin into a mixing cup and then one single drop of the intensity ink and giving it a really good proper mix to make sure that colors really distributed across all of that resin i'm not going to have any streaks or anything in there it's going to taint the resin exactly how i want it to do so it's going to be a nice blue color and then using the mixing spatula i'm just going to start dripping this resin into the base and it's a bit thicker than the two-part epoxy so i'm going to have to end up scraping this in instead of using the spatula and i'm just making sure here that it's evenly distributed it does flow but it doesn't find its level like it would do if it was a two-part epoxy mix i find that sort of stuff is brilliant for this application because you put it in and you just leave it and it finds exactly a perfect level i'm not having to mess, mess about moving it around mixing it around or anything like this whereas with the uv resin i did have to do a little bit of sort of gravitational movement to make sure that the ink and the resin mixture got into all the parts that it should do and then to remove the surface bubbles, I'm just using a blowtorch here. Now you can use anything that's a heat source. I'm using this really sparingly because I don't want to set anything else on fire or to melt any of the plastic. So I'm just literally turning it on real quick. But this is going to pop all the surface bubbles so you're not going to have that horrible effect that you see sometimes in miniature dioramas where it's just bubbly as hell. So just be careful, don't burn any of the twigs and leaves like I did. Um, you can use a soldering torch, apparently it's better because it's not a flame, it's just a heat element. But this is all I had to hand and it, it works for bigger dioramas, this is probably the smallest resin pour I've done. But with all the bubbles gone, it's time to start curing it. So using the little handheld curing torch that I've got, like I say, works perfectly for glue but it didn't seem to touch this resin at all. I think it was just too deep. So I brought out the big boy and I got this one from Amazon. It's something that I use in my curing station and I just sat it on top of it and left it for literally less than a minute. And the resin cured perfectly. It was solid as a rock. It was dry. There was no leakage. There was nothing wrong with it. Ab absolutely fantastic. As I say, I use this for when I'm doing my resin curing from 3D printing. So I know it's strong. I know it works, but it worked an absolute treat on this. And then this allowed me to then move straight on to the next layer for the next pour to make sure that I could get the depth that I wanted to. And again, just using the UV torch, UV lamp to cure it again. If I did this with a two-part epoxy, I could have just done a deep pour to start with. My worry here was if I poured too deep and it shrunk at any time with the UV resin curing, which I think it does, I didn't want this to start cracking or to pull any of the base away or to, to make a mess. I just wanted to do little layers at a time. But despite all this precaution, I did end up having the resin split at the back between the two different layers. This could be easily fixed with a drill straight through the center of it and then some resin poured into the middle of it just to fill up that gap. But this sort of stuff happens when you're making diorama, especially with stuff that you've never made or used before. So the UV resin for me is very new. And I also found that this was really hard to pull off as well with the outside dam. It just doesn't peel as easy as it does with a two-part epoxy and you've got to learn from your mistakes and stuff that happens and sort of evolve from it and learn new ways of fixing it so it's just as easy with this we're going to put some water effects on the top of it you're never going to see those two parts underneath it afterwards and i think it's quite important to show you guys that this this has happened it's not something that you're not always going to get a perfect resin pour there's always going to be something that goes wrong with it you are at the end of the day pouring resin and using multiple different materials and different ways that you're going to be building this something's going to go wrong eventually it's just learning how to overcome it and how to make it better but once this was all peeled off it did take me quite a while as i say it tended to stick to the plastic where normally it should just peel straight off but once this was all off i went around the edge with a sharp knife just to remove the lip and then use some of the remaining resin that was left to go back over that lip and then cured it again to make it smooth so that it didn't have any of the frosted effects that you get when you cut resin or when you shave down resin it made it all nice and smooth and into one overall puddle or riverbed in this case at this point the kitty mount was done and ready to be based but what i was cautious of is having this kitty look like it's walking on water i wanted it to look like it was splashing through a shallow river 
So I decided to get some Green Stuff World Splash Effects Gel. And the idea here is just to go around all the pores of the kitty and make a ripple effect using the gel. You can use Mod Podge Gloss for a similar effect as well, but this is a little bit thicker for it and it just makes it a bit of an easier application. So after two or three different layers of this, I found that the effect was perfect, ready to be dry brushed with a little bit of white for the foam on top of the water like you would get in real life. But I have to admit, I'm super excited at how this is turning out. The last few steps is just to add some various bushes and plants and I bought a few and I decided to go with just some general grass bushes, some dry grass and some nice red flowers that I bought from Green Stuff World for some of my Eldar bases. Now I always find with these pre-made tufts that they're a little bit big and a little bit cumbersome so I tend to cut them down or at least rip them down into smaller pieces. But what I'm going to do here is use some tweezers just to put them into place and to push them down to where I want them. So for some of the grass tufts, I'm going to go in between the rocks as if you've got foliage growing between the rocks like you would do in real life. And then I'm going to use the dry grass tufts around some of the back of the bases and in between some of the deeper rock areas as well. And as a final step, we're going to start adding the red flowers. Now, as I say, these were for my Eldar bases. I think they look quite alien, but they also look very wildflower-esque as well which I really liked on this and it's going to add that little bit of colour pop to the rest of the base that it doesn't have otherwise. As the last step in this I decided to paint the rim of the base in a nice glossy black and we were done. I'm genuinely over the moon with how this base turned out. It's the first forest base that I've ever created for my minis. I don't tend to do forest base. It tends to be more cityscape and alien landscape and a lot of snow bases, to be fair. This is the first forest base that I've done, and I'm absolutely chuffed with it. And it's only a few steps. It's quite easy to do. It's anyone can do this at home to make an epic-looking base like this. And while this is for more of a character model, you can make similar ones on a smaller scale as well for the rest of your army if you wanted a forest-themed army, just without the resin and it'll all tie together lovely. I'm really happy with how it turned out, especially when I've got the mount on top of it as well. It just finished off the piece for me and sold the story that I was trying to tell with the mouse and the kitty mount. And I'm hoping that this has been a interesting tutorial for you guys and shown you some new techniques maybe, or some new ideas that you've not thought of for your own personal armies. I really hope you've enjoyed this content, and if you want to help support the channel, you can do so by liking, commenting, and subscribing. And you can go one step further by supporting me on Patreon. For just $2 a month, you can buy me coffee and keep me awake during the long nights that I try and make this content for you guys. I'm working on a Galaxy Head theme tutorial for you guys for my next upload. It's something that's been requested over on Reddit and I started making a video for it, as well as the beginner series that I'm going to be working on very shortly as well. So make sure you check out that when it lands. But that's all for today, guys. I really hope you've enjoyed it and we'll definitely see you in the next one.